co-production is about reframing who the expert is in any scenario. So moving away from the idea that professionals have the most knowledge um, and the most expertise about things in social services to actually accepting that the people who access social services and frontline staff generally are experts in what they know. Co-production is about working in equal partnership um, and involving people who access care and support and their carers, family members, with health and social care professionals and it's about shifting the balance of power and putting um, their needs at the very heart of things. It's only true co-production if you bring both the people that use serv the services and people that deliver them together in an equal partnership so that no one voice or one interest is more powerful than any other. Hi, I'm Ryan McLean. I'm an associate at IRIS. I've been here kind of since last July, specifically brought on for our, our project called Fit for the Future. Kind of pulled together some general lessons, challenges, nice things that have come out of the co-production that we've been doing as part of the, the project. Largely when I'm talking about co-production, I'm talking about the people who access support and um, staff. I've also found it's actually really challenging to find spaces and buildings that are accessible. Um, some of our group members like to be on the move, get up and walk, take loads of breaks, um, need some space outdoors sometimes, and it can be difficult to find genuine places where people can meet together. Members of my group, which is focusing on dementia redesign, will tell me that um, they don't have dementia, or they'll tell me that they do have dementia, but they don't have a diagnosis. Um, and rather than get pernickety about that and say eligibility, we kind of just open the group up and people can come along. A lot of people don't have a, a set diagnosis of dementia until they're later on in their journey and actually it's much more useful to um, catch everyone at different stages of that journey. So I'm going to talk about Hospital to Home, a uh, project that I've been working on. Um, like Brian, I started in Iris almost a year ago and I've been leading this project for the past about nine months now. Um, during those nine months, I've been working with practitioners across Scotland um, in the initial phases to identify the four main pathways from hospital to home. Um, going on what Ryan was saying, just talking about what their skills are. Um, I wouldn't really like someone to say, you know what, I'm a district nurse or something when they introduce themselves it is more about their skill set and what they're bringing in their experience because I think that's why everyone's been brought together it's because of the different experiences and the different stories that they can they can tell about this journey and the pathway. I just want to tell you a little bit about our Keeping It Personal project. Um, its ambition really is to improve person-centred care, uh, working across health and social care um, to improve care and support support for people with long-term conditions. We've recruited two partnership sites, uh, one from North Lanarkshire, um, working with people with um, heart failure, and the other one is working in North West Glasgow with people with dementia. Co-production, we spent quite a lot of time exploring how we want to work. So the first meeting, we spent a bit of time building those relationships, so getting to know each other, really important. Um, and I think important every time. Um, it's quite interesting with the, the group with dementia, we used, particularly as um, memory is an issue, we've used uh, we think a sort of life histories approach. So we've asked people to share um, stories about, um, how did we use th their favorite music, maybe their first job, their favorite teacher, all sorts of things like that. We very much encourage people to ask questions um, try to steer clear of jargon, we've got a parking lot, anything, any words, phrases people use that are not well understood, we say please raise your hand. We've used this red, red card idea that was stolen from Pilot Light. One group really likes it, the other group says no we don't need that. <laughs> it's interesting, they're all different. Um, and in terms of process and roles, again very much stressed that our role is as IRIS facilitators, perhaps sometimes trainers by introducing ideas and concepts, but the expertise lies with the group. So they're driving the learning, they're driving the planning and the improvement. And um, so that is very, very much stressed. 
Pilot Light, it's a three-year project where we've just entered year three. It's funded by the Scottish Government um, from the self-directed support provider capacity funding stream. And what we're aiming to do is to um, design um, four pathways to self-directed support. The first pathway was around access to self-directed support for people with mental health problems. Um, our second pathway was around the interface between adult protection and self-directed support, kind of safeguarding, enabling tension. Our third pathway is around self-directed support to support small business um, development. And we are still looking for a fourth pathway. <laughs> um, really, I think why it's been so successful so far has been actually because we put the people using services and delivering services at the heart of the, the design process. And really, we're just facilitating that process. They're, I really believe those people are the designers of, of the sort of outcomes of that project.